Hi, I'm Rick Hess, Director of Education Policy Studies at the American Enterprise Institute. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you today. Thanks so much for taking the time. I just want to take a couple moments uh, to talk about uh, innovation and really a transformative change in K-12 schooling and what you all are in a position to do to help make it happen. Let's start at, this, let's start at the beginning. Why do we care about innovation? Innovation is a buzzword uh, that can cover all manner of sense. The reason that I think we need to embrace what we call innovation is because our schools and our school systems were not built to meet the need of children in today's world. Uh, the common schools of another era were built out in the middle of the 1800s in an effort to make sure all kids got a little bit of schooling. When we universalized public education in the early 1900s, um, only one child in 10 finished high school. We're not talking about something that was ever intended to educate all of our children to a high level. Today we are. And it's no surprise that when our demands have changed, that the way we go about the work of schooling should probably change. But there's more than that. Not only have our demands changed, not only are we more concerned about how our children uh, learn and how, how our children are equipped uh, to, to, to thrive in an uh, internationally competitive world, but our tools have changed too. We have opportunities today that once didn't exist. 30 years ago, if you wanted to tutor a child, you had to drive to that child's school. Today, if we want to have a child tutored, they can take their iPad, heck, they can take their smartphone, and they can hook up with a Mandarin tutor who lives in Beijing, or Boston, or Bangalore. So the question is, how do we make it possible for schools and school systems and parents to make sure that they are able to take full advantage of all of the resources and all the talent at our disposal to equip our kids for today's higher demands? That's the challenge for educators. What you all are in a position to do that can help is to start thinking about how do we fund schools, how do we regulate schools, and how do we reward schools in ways that encourage and support far-sighted school and system leaders and that create room for them to go ahead and best serve their kids. First off, at a very simple level, Today's school and system leaders are often frustrated. We have decades of rules and regulations. There are contracts, there are embedded cultures that make it hard for them to do what they think is best for kids. If they think it makes sense to move from old-fashioned textbooks to digital texts, if they think it makes sense to start offering more online tutoring, if they think it makes sense to complement classroom teachers with online instruction, there are any number of funding regulations, of funding restrictions, of rules about maintenance of effort and supplement not supplant in state and federal regulation that can get in their way. There's huge opportunities for state leaders at the state education agencies and in the legislature to take a hard look at decades of accumulated rules, talking to superintendents and reform-minded school boards and strong principles, and identifying which of these rules and regs are now doing more harm than good, whatever the justification when they were first passed. That's one thing. The second thing is that even if you are a reform-minded school or system leader, there's any number of challenges. You have skeptical parents who may wonder about some of these new technology-enabled uh, school models. You have teachers who are nervous about how this is going to impact uh, their jobs uh, or their work or, or, their, or their security or compensation. Principals and superintendents and school boards can wind up entangled in those conversations, and sometimes it can be very difficult to move. What the legislature can do is by making dollars available that are intended to support and reward far, far-sighted school and system leaders, is start to... Uh, break up some of those log jams, start to change that dynamic. Um, if you reward superintendents who are moving out front, who are willing to think smarter about how do they use new technology, about how do you use staff in smarter ways, that superintendent can now say to parents, hey, I know you might be a little uncomfortable, 
but we are going to be able to bring hundreds of thousands of dollars in to support your children if we try this. They can say to teachers and teachers unions, hey guys, I know you might have some qualms, but we are going to be able to put more dollars in your pocket. We're going to be able to create new opportunities if you move with me. So one of the opportunities of funding innovation is that it can start to change the dynamics for those school and system leaders out in the field. Part of the trick here is getting comfortable with the idea that we're going to make dollars available to reform-minded school and system leaders without new mandates, without new restrictions, without trying to imagine that you guys in a state capital or those of us sitting in a think tank somewhere um, know precisely how these dollars can best be spent across the state. Now look, one final point I want to make. This can be a challenging push, especially in a tight fiscal environment, especially with competing priorities. We always hear uh, concerns about why fund any of this stuff. Let's put dollars into adding teachers and a shrinking class size. Look, the reality is that in education or anywhere else, the bulk of reform energy is, ma is about making a difference in the talent level. Great school leaders, great system leaders, great teachers are the most valuable thing that anybody can deliver, whether that's a body in the classroom or folks who are helping Ohio's children online. And the reality is, if you start to become a magnet for that kind of talent, like Washington, D.C. has come, like New Orleans has done, what's going to happen is Ohio is going to be increasingly attractive to problem solvers, to educators, and to entrepreneurs. That's the real opportunity here, to start to create that dynamic cycle where folks are coming to Ohio with an eye to solving challenges for kids. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, and allowing me to visit with you today. Um, and the best of luck as, uh, as you tackle these critical issues.